Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, quick uh, explication of uh, uh, that uh, exercise in Presi. Uh, Ogun is the god of uh, Yoruba, god of creativity, uh, of the lyric, as well as of war, of uh, conflict. And uh, it so happened, uh, I was wrong by the way, um, when you talked about the seven word bio, I had in mind a previous request for a 50 word bio. So, um, so I had to make that up immediately, but it came very easily for the simple reason that uh, I'll be talking about mythology tonight, and Ogun is one of the principal, uh, uh, one of the greatest myths in Yoruba uh, uh, pantheon and cosmology, and I happen to be a disciple of Ogun. So that's it, a disciple of Ogun, but with crucial deviations. Uh, never wholeheartedly embraced mentors. Uh, now, <coughs> Humpty Dumpty, yet on the wall. Uh, it's sound audience uh, relations always to begin on a sad note and then move on to euphoric cadences. So firstly, tragedy. I am, as many of you are aware, a compulsive mythologist and nothing would have been more fulfilling than to stand here today and affirm a frankly delightful piece of mythology. It concerns the ancestor in whose name we are all gathered here today, and my own self, that ancestor being, of course, Arthur Miller. It has not been easy to bring myself to debunk that mythology, especially as it links me also to one of the greatest works of pulchritude that the cinema has ever celebrated, that being Marilyn Monroe, whom I never met in real life. Like any former prisoner, I remain deeply appreciative of the efforts of the literary world, human rights organizations such as Amnesty International, etc., to obtain my liberty from the Nigerian military government during the Biafran War of Secession, 1966 to 69. Those who doubt that these efforts are of immense value to the physical and moral welfare of the prisoner even if they do not immediately lead to his or her release, should take the testaments of the prisoners themselves and of their immediate colleagues and relations a little more seriously. I could not receive any indication of these efforts through normal channels while incarcerated, but as with most prisons, news have a way of uh, percolating even the stoutest walls. I was aware that the world of letters had not forgotten my existence, and it mattered. Arthur Miller was at the forefront of agitators on my behalf, and I was able to thank him in person when we eventually met. However, and here comes the moment of deflation, I'm afraid my release had nothing to do with his being then married to Marilyn Monroe. Since this anecdote kept cropping up, it still does, I became curious and checked, uh, checked the truth of it from impeccable sources, including from the man who signed both my detention and release orders. I'm afraid Marilyn Monroe had nothing to do with it. Now, if instead of signing petitions and writing letters, Arthur Miller had dispatched Marilyn Monroe as his personal ambassador. <laughs> I'm convinced that I would have been released much earlier. <clears throat> Since the pen is mightier than the sword, and beauty proved mightier than the pen, beauty would have shattered the general's swords in no time. I wish that were also true. From that sad note, albeit with uh, the uplifting tonalities of the pursuit of beauty in the creative enterprise, and we're not speaking here, of course, of physical beauty alone, we shall shift temporarily away from the mythological realm to the factual, but we shall be back. 
Factual does not, of course, equate indisputable. So let who will dispute the following claim, for which this platform, Pen International, is singularly appropriate and deserving. And so to make up for the deprivation of the myth of the connubial weapon in the liberation of one writer, that very writer now lays personal claim to the liberation of entire peoples from dictatorship. A veritable tsunami that began in the Maghreb has swept through North Africa to the Middle East and is presently congealing, alas, as I write this, in the stubborn, blood-stained redoubts of Yemen, Libya, and Syria, among other slave plantations. I concede an enabling role to Penn International in this human transformation, but I insist on the lion's share for myself. The eruption of the contagious virus of change is deemed a revolutionary outbreak by some, Others call it popular uprising, and others, any number of names, the sum of which is known and understood by all as simply freedom. Mind you, even freedom has a rich and varied menu, none without its rationalizations. There is freedom to accept domination, freedom to accept power's control over individual choice, will, including even the exercise of thought. Some scriptures actually propose that freedom can only be found in the act of submission. Reams of theological tracts have been devoted to that thesis, seminized from pulpits and every form of religious podium. <clears throat> There's freedom to listen also to the mockery of one's voice, bouncing back in diminishing echoes from walls controlled by the eyeless servitors of power, there's freedom to walk within the perimeter of walls rather than on the outside. Freedom even to meditate on the nature of walls, especially of the kind festooned with barbed wires, watchtowers bristling with guns, the circuit lined with anti-personnel mines, patrol balsations, and invisible electronic guidance, the many clones of the Berlin Wall. There's freedom to kowtow to power, Freedom to project freedom onto walls of enclosure, but never actually breach such walls into other kinds of freedom. There's also the freedom of exile, which for some is no freedom at all, but a crippling form of constraint. Some writers have found freedom in collaboration with power. Others, however, experience freedom in the very impulse that makes them get on their broomsticks levitate and charge, hopefully knock Humpty Dumpty off his gilded perch with all the attendant risks. As an anguished ruler once protested, what sort of freedom are these peasants talking about? Aren't they free to breed like rabbits within my domain? I see that I have already invoked one of my favorite accessories for delineating the writer's occupation the broomstick, which of course is a property of witchery or sorcery, necromancy. I shall try and justify that co-option as we proceed, but first, we must proceed to the grounds of my statement of claim in the stakes of the recent tidal wave of liberation. In December last year, I fulfilled an invitation to deliver a lecture to the African Development Bank in Tunis where the world media has testified it all began. Do take careful note as I proceed of the interlinkage of the dramatis personae of individual and institutional as well as mythological players as we pursue the unfolding of history, propelled, aided, and abetted, as I said, by mythology, the classic kind this time. That bank, the ADB, has had quite a turbulent career its actual headquarters are in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, which some may recall, have been prominent on the world's radar of civil disturbances much further back than the most recent 2010-2011 edition might suggest. 